Hey, it's Tom from This Day in Baseball, and today I'm going to bring you back to October 2nd, 1945. So there was a roundtable the day before the World Series that featured um, the announcers interviewing Floyd Frick, Charlie Grimm, Happy Chandler, Steve O'Neill, classic interview. And they're whirling through everything from Grimm's antics to the clean game of baseball to grandchildren and you name it. Uh, it is something that's going to bring you back to 1945. And if you enjoy the interview uh, and you're inspired to listen to the games, we have those as well. We have five of the seven uh, radio broadcasts from the 1945 World Series. And that does include uh, game four, uh, the Billy Goat game, the uh, curse of the Billy Goat, uh, where Murph was removed from the stadium because he was annoying uh, some of the fans. So you can listen to those games right here on YouTube uh, on the, the Stay in Baseball. Uh, just subscribe to our channel. Or you can hop over to uh, thisdayinbaseball.com, sign up for a membership, download the games, put them onto your phone, uh, take them for a walk with you, a workout, take them to on your ride to work, whatever uh, works for you. Uh, and again, uh, this game's uh, one, three, four, six, and seven. And if you do become a member on This Day in Baseball, you actually can get a score sheet as well. And if you like to score the games, you can do that. That can bring us back some real memories. So however you find your way to the games, I just hope you enjoy them and you enjoy this interview and subscribe to our channel. All right, off to the uh, interview. When the Gillette Safety Razor Company brings you the play-by-play -play description of the opening game of the 1945 World Series. But to tell you about it, let's listen to the men in the know. First, here's one of Mutual's play-by-play -play announcers and top-ranking sports commentators, Bill Slater. Thank you, Joe. Good evening, everyone. Here in the suite of Commissioner Chandler at the Statler Hotel in Detroit, we have a very interesting crowd gathered. Just uh, around me here are Al Helfer and Bill Coram, and the three of us are going to work on the series tomorrow. In other spots around the room are Mr. Will Harry, the president of the American League, Mr. Ford Frick, the president of the National League, smiling Steve O'Neill, the manager of the Detroit Tigers, Jolly Charlie Grimm, the manager of the Chicago Cubs, Mr. J.P. Spang, Jr., the boss man of the Gillette Safety Razor Company, Mr. Edgar Kobach, the boss man of the Mutual Broadcasting System, and the commissioner himself, Commissioner Happy Chandler. You're going to have a chance to meet them all, and our first pleasure is to meet the president of the American League, Mr. Will Harridge. Mr. Harridge, we're glad you're here. Thank you, Bill. I'm glad to be here with you again. Your American League hasn't won uh, the World Series since 1942, I believe, Mr. Harridge. How do you feel about it tonight? Before Bill, the... this is our year. You think this is your year? I think it is. How do you feel about this first peacetime World Series since 1941, Mr. Harridge? Well, this is a great series to me, and because after four years of war, it's again a peacetime series. Loyal support by millions of fans, both at home and abroad, made this series possible. To those fans and to the scores of older players who carried on in the absence of players in the armed forces, baseball will always be grateful. I believe this series signifies the opening of a great new era for the game, with many a new star coming up to join those returning from the wars. The two great organizations like the Cubs and the Tigers meeting again after 10 years, this battle should take its place with a great classic of the past. I think we all agree with you, Mr. Harridge, and thanks for being with us. Thank you, Bill. My pleasure to bring to our mutual mic now the manager of the Chicago Cubs, one of the finest guys in organized baseball today, uh, Jolly Charlie Grimm. Hello, Charlie. Thank you, Bill, and good evening, fans. Uh, Charlie, I believe that you were in a World Series just exactly 10 years ago with the Tigers. That's absolutely right, Bill, and I believe we're going to uh, leave this one to our own selves and leave a victorious team. You think it's going to be different this yes, time, sir, eh, Charlie? Yes, Charlie, one of the things that we enjoy most during the regular season is seeing you coaching down there at third. Of course, those famous pantomime antics of yours is something that I believe newspapers have even advertised to get people out to park. Are we going to have that in the series, Charlie? I know we will, Bill, because we went through a 154-game schedule, a competitive schedule, and we had a lot of fun doing it, and I don't see why we should stop playing a World Series. And in the series is in the regular schedule. You're coming in on a laugh and a prayer. That, that is, is correct, Charlie. Bill. Charlie, you got your banjo with you? No, that's home. Well, that's too bad. Maybe we can dig you one up. <laughs> well, Bill, I'll tell you, the course of the season, why, if your fingernails, why, need to be a little long. So I chewed them right, right off during this 54, 154 game sketch. Well, speaking of you chewing your fingernails, I thought of you last Saturday night when you won the pennant down in Pittsburgh, and I believe that was also your 23rd wedding anniversary, wasn't it, Charlie? That's correct, Bill. Well, now, how did your wife know whether you were celebrating the winning of the pennant or celebrating the wedding anniversary? Well, after being married to the same girl for 23 years, I believe that uh, she knew herself what we were celebrating on that night, the victorious night when we defeated Pittsburgh. Well, I'm glad it all came out all right that evening, Charlie, and the best of luck to you in the series. Thank you, Bill, up. very much. Now it's my pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to present the uh, 
colleague who will share the play-by-play -play description of the World Series with me. He is tall, handsome Al Halper, who served with distinction as a lieutenant commander in the United States Navy in this war. And now here is Al coming in. Al? Well, thank you very much, Bill. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, now it's my pleasure to introduce to you a man that uh, has piloted his Detroit Tigers to the 1945 American League flag. And uh, I feel kind of happy tonight in introducing this gentleman because he was born in uh, my home state. He was born in a place called, uh, what was that, Steve? Manuka, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve O'Neill. <laughs> Thank you, Al. I'm very happy to be here, Al. Well, Steve, uh, you're, you're a veteran as far as World Series is concerned. You played back in the 1920 World Series with Cleveland, didn't you? That's right, Al. 13 years you, uh, you caught for Cleveland. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you uh, stack up this World Series, Steve? Well, Al, I think that our ball club right now is in as good a condition possibly as any time during the season. Greenberg's ankle has improved a great deal, and so has Mayo's side and his arm. And I think also that Newhauser has gotten rid of the little ailment that he did have. And I think that we're in A number one shape, and uh, there's no reason why we can't go on to win. But in the event we don't, we know that a better club is deeper. You, you think that Charlie Grimm is going to be in second place? I really do, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> well, Steve, thank you very much for coming up tonight, and uh, we're wishing you every bit of luck in the world for you to try to Thank you, Al. And now, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of colleagues, I'm very happy and very pleased. I'll have the opportunity of being on the air with a man I consider, along with thousands of other sport fans, as being one of the grand personalities of the game. He's the New York Journal, New York American uh, sports writer, also writing a syndicated column of sports that thousands have read throughout the country. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very proud to introduce to you tonight, Bill Corum. Thank you, Al Helfer, and you and I. Bill Slater will have plenty to say a late, long later in the week as this series rolls along. But I know we haven't got much time tonight, and it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Joseph P. Spang, Jr., president of the Gillette Safety Razor Company, which, as all you sports fans know, annually broadcasts these World Series games, the Kentucky Derby, the Bowl football games, and the top bouts on Gillette's famous cavalcade of sports. I know, Joe, that you're happy, as all of us at Gillette are, that this year, so many of our American boys are going to be listening to the series back here at home, where it is the great national game. Well, Bill, that's what we've been hoping and praying for for so long. And isn't it great that so many of the boys will be uh, hearing this uh, uh, series over the air uh, in their own home surroundings? And for the fellas that are still in there, the, the boys in the zones of occupation and the boys uh, are on the ships, uh, this year as usual, we're going to give them uh, every play, all the color, everything we got, except one thing, Bill. We can't give them those commercials. Now, that's tough, but do you think they'll get through that all right? I think they'll live through it, Joe. But we'll be laying for them when they get back. And we know that whatever they've missed while they were away winning two great wars, at least those who could get to a radio heard the series year after year and every play as it took place. Well, I think baseball deserves a great tribute for the courageous position they've taken during these war years in continuing this game. Uh, I think great credit is due uh, not only those fellows that were uh, in the war, in the Army, in the Navy, in the Air Force, the fellows that couldn't get in here at home, uh, uh, the club owners, uh, the presidents of the league, uh, Will Harridge and Ford Frick, and also I think the late Judge Landis and his great and able uh, successor, uh, Commissioner Chandler. I think we should take our hats off to baseball. That goes for all of us, Joe. Now, I know you used to play football, and they tell me you're a pretty hot baseball fan up there in Boston, too. Who are you rooting for in the series? Well, Bill, uh, coming from Boston, uh, we haven't been in on this World Series very much. The Braves and the Red Sox uh, uh, haven't been quite up there. We'll but, give you a rain check. Well, we're looking ahead, but uh, uh, seeing that they're not in, all I can say is that I hope we have good weather, we have seven good games, and we have them aired in good shape over the air, and I know we're going to have all three. The players will agree with you in those seven games, Joe. Thank you very much. Now you're so clear. Thank you, Bill. It seems that all the big wigs in the radio and razor blade business and the baseball business are here tonight, and it's my pleasure to bring to the microphone now the president of the Mutual Broadcasting System, Mr. Edgar Kobach. Welcome to the broadcast, Mr. Kobach, on your network. Thank you for welcoming me to my network. Uh, very nice of us all. Mr. Kobach, isn't this the largest uh, sports broadcast hookup in the history of the business so far? My legal advisor tells me that it's over 500 stations, the largest hookup that's ever been put together. I think there are 128 stations overseas. Every man and woman in the services overseas is going to be able to hear this series. 
I think the latest tally indicated there will be more than 500 stations on the broadcast. That is a lot of stations. How does it feel, sir, to be the president of the network supervising the biggest sports pickup in all history? That's the silliest question you've ever asked anybody on this station, on this network. Thank you, Mr. Kobach, president of the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs> now it's my pleasure to welcome again to the broadcast the president of the Gillette Safety Razor Company, Mr. J.P. Spang, Jr. Mr. Spang? Well, I have the very great pleasure of bringing to the microphone now the new High Commissioner of Baseball, that uh, great gentleman from Kentucky, the senator from that state, and our new High Commissioner of Baseball, a fine gentleman interested in all clean sports, interested in boys particularly, of which he has two fine ones. Commissioner Chandler. Thank you very much, Joe. I'm delighted to join with uh, you other citizens of the country, and I'd like to remind the baseball fans that I'm the only fellow here that has no side. I've lost my rooting privileges, and I've got to sit between the president of the National League and the president of the American League and be entirely neutral. Now, for a fellow that used to root for his team, that's a tough proposition. Well, you may not have any side, uh, Senator, but I notice you have a group of very, very beautiful women around. Uh, could we have a little explanation of that, sir? Well, that's Mama Chandler. She's the secretary of war at our house, and those are our two lovely daughters. <laughs> And don't I see an army officer in the offing somewhere, uh, that's, Senator? That's Colonel Gregg, who's been bombing the Japs with the B-29s. And they have a very nice baby girl at home, and she's my pride and joy. She's my only grandchild. You're about the youngest grandfather that any kid had, I'll bet. I'm about as young as they get, I guess, right. Bill. Well, <laughs> as a matter of fact, Bill, I was very much surprised when uh, Senator Chandler uh, told us his exact age. As a matter of fact, uh, Bill said he believed that uh, he was a little older than you were, uh, Senator. But uh, I, I think, Bill, it's probably because of that good Kentucky corn pone of which I've had some of late. Corn what? Corn pone. Oh. Uh, some of T-O-N-E. <laughs> <laughs> <Go ahead, Al. laughs> <laughs> then there's uh, just one question I should like to ask. In all of baseball, and uh, I know it is a tremendous job, uh, I wondered if you, in your own mind, had picked out someone that you thought was the outstanding personality of all time in baseball. Well, of course, I'd have to say Ty Cobb just uh, on the spur because he was my hero when I was a boy. I tried to run like him and throw like him and take the bases the way he did, and uh, every boy has a hero that's a baseball player. And uh, uh, my interest in baseball is genuine. All of my life, I believe that if you gave a boy a baseball bat and a glove and a place to play, that his chances for making a good citizen were greatly increased. Now, I want to tell you how glad I am that you all are going to carry this... Uh, broadcast all over the world and on all these 500 stations because uh, baseball has fought a, a hard fight to keep going during the war. Uh, the American people have fought a tough battle to win this fight against our enemies. And I think we're all on the winning side this time because win or lose, and may the better team win, uh, the American people, all of us, are the winners this time. And I look forward to a great series and a, and a great sports boom in all sports when the war is over and baseball, of course, ought to lead the way because it is the great American game. Well, Senator, I know I speak for Alan, for everyone concerned up here in Detroit tonight, and thanking you for the smooth way that arrangements have been made for carrying off this 1945 series, and thanks a lot for being on our Thank broadcast. Thank you very Senator. much, Bill. Thank, Thank you, Senator. Alan. Good night. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's Joe Gentile. Joe? You have just heard the inside story of what is expected to happen tomorrow at Briggs Stadium here in Detroit when Mutual brings you a play-by-play -play description of the 1945 World Series under the sponsorship of the Gillette Safety Razor Company. Tonight, you heard from Senator Happy Chandler, Commissioner of Baseball, Mr. J.P. Spang, Jr., Mr. Edgar Kobach, Mr. Ford Frick, Mr. Will Herridge, Charlie Grimm, Steve O'Neill, and those three men that will give you the play-by-play -play description and the highlights of the game, Bill Slater, Bill Corum, and Hal Helfer. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.